welcome back to the stage as Weibo Gaming saved the world's run. And Tarzan, thank you so much for joining me after this one. Wendy, thank you so much to assist me with the translation. I want to talk about that last game because you picked Morgana in an elimination series. What made you think it was the right plan and that overall you had the draft that was going to bring you the victory? 那首先恭喜你们获得这场比赛的胜利，你们的世界赛之旅还在继续。同时也想问一下，你们在生死局的选择，当时背水一战的情况之下，选出了莫甘娜的打野。所以说，想问一下，当时为什么会觉得这是一个正确的选择？同时，你觉得你们的这个阵容为什么会是那条可以让你们通往胜利的道路呢？呃，首先莫甘娜英雄的话，我们其实已经提前准备好的英雄，然后教练组给我很有自信了，我的莫甘娜就。So to be honest, I must say that Morgana pick we have already made the well preparation for the pick, and also our coaching staff gave me the enough trust and enough belief for that Morgana. I'm very confident with this champion, so that's why we like to just give this champion a try in the elimination match. Confidence and a well thought plan. Now, Tarzan, I remember that a few days ago you told me that you were the last Griffin who was not yet qualified to quarterfinals. Now that you made it, how does it feel? Oh. <笑>哦，就其实就我是最后一个人嘛，就就所以其实就今天进了八场之后，就跟跟之前队友就一起拍合照，就应该这样就很开心。Yeah, I'm the last one be able to qualify to the quarterfinals as a former Griffin uh, player. And also, maybe in the future, if all five of us, we can just take a photo together, that would be great. Reunion in Paris. We have uh, the date now. Last question for you. Um, Swiss stage was a bit difficult. What can we wish you for the rest of the tournament? What do you guys want to improve upon? 那可能对于你们来讲，瑞士轮到目前为止整个的过程可能有点艰辛，但是你觉得我们可以从你们身上期待一些什么？觉得哪些部分还可以做得更好，能够让你们未来走得更远呢？哦，就前面比赛的我们其实配合上和就 BP 的里面也我们就没有做好吧，然后我们就大家一起一直努力，然后教练也一直努力了，所以我们就现在变了很好了吧。So maybe from the very beginning, in terms of the synergy and also the band pick, we have some issues around those parts. But definitely under the effort put in by all the players and also the coaching staff, I think we have made some improvements on already and we're going to try our best to do better. Wishing you the best in the quarterfinals because you made it to Paris. Shishi, thank you so much for the interview. Wendy, thank you so much for the translation. And Weibo Gaming advances to the next round. Shades of 2023, where Weibo again, after three games, make it into the next round and they make it into um, the, the plane to go to Paris, uh, where DK unfortunately has to go back to Korea and will not make it for the second year in a row. But up next, though, it is our featured matchup presented by Mercedes Benz G2 versus BLG. G2 faces their executioners from 2023. No! Hot Summer is already dead! Caps hit by the arrow! Shun's ready to jump in and try to take this guy down! He goes golden! Caps should die here! The last vestige of the LEC is wiped from Worlds 2023! Will they overcome history? Or will BLG rise again? There we go, Ooh. we found ourselves in this exact position last year, if you all remember. It was for G2 after they dropped the ball, fumbled the bag in the biggest Got way beaten, possible fair and square. by NRG, who beat them fair and square indeed <laughs> in a 2-0, and zero, mind you. And then they had to play BLG where uh, <sighs> they lost that series. Two to one. Um, and I feel like living in the past, this is tricky for both of these teams because this is a different BLG mm. from their regular season, but also from their current form. And this is definitely not a 2019 G2 that we should expect to easily favor in a matchup like this. This is hard. Where do we start? Yeah. Pick something. Okay. <laughs> the things that G2 does that to me make them exceptional. Okay. I feel like there are some commonalities there. Mm -hmm. I feel like... When, even if I look back to 2019 G2 and compare them to the G2 we saw at MSI, 
They had incredible level ones. They really cooked in the draft phase, mm -hmm. and they had world-class macro. And I think those things can be true. And just to refresh people's memory, at MSI, just MSI, that one tournament when they created Peak League of Legends and what it looks like, <laughs> they flexed all five of those champions within the same tournament. At MSI, they were the only team to play. Leona, Lilia, Belveth, Yasuo, Jinx, only team to win with Rek'Sai, and they had two wins with Zac. The rest of the tournament only had one with Zac and had seven losses. Even at this tournament, they cooked a little bit. They flexed Poppy in game one against HLE, looked pretty good, almost won, and they counterpicked the Rumble Top with Galio. They didn't cook as much as I would like for them to cook against T1, and still had like a triple and hib game and had Baron stolen on them in that game too. So I actually think these two teams are closer than we than think. Than I might perceive. Also, T1 just put like a whole fat of salt in that by picking the Gragas and distorting their comp, let's not forget. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think uh, for G2, they are the first seed coming out of the LEC. Their entire 600 plus day run, right, has mm -hmm. been building up to this because they've never gotten the result that they wanted. Emily, let's contrast that with a BLG, a first seed out of the LPL with tremendous pressure. This was supposed to be the team we were not supposed to worry about. Yeah, first seeds from the LPL, you know, it's a uh, uh, it's kind of it's been a little bit of a coin flip uh, as to how they're going to do over the years. I think the most stunning thing for me about this BLG team is, like you prefaced, they were not supposed to be the team that we were going to worry about, right? They looked by far and away the strongest team in LPL. It also looked like the meta was going to be something that would suit them, especially with Knight being able to go back to stuff like the Syndra, even the Ari pick, which they have played, um, but they haven't done as well. And as you can see this video <laughs> behind me, this, is, this was subtitled by iCrystallization on Twitter, but it is a, a rant uh, a by upset. a popular B, uh, Billy Billy streamer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and they are mad. Uh, my favorite line comes after where it's basically like, don't tell us that you're going to evolve. Like, if you lose here, you need to go down and evolve in the Demacia Cup. But I think the reason why I pulled this is actually not, not only because it's funny, but because it illustrates how much pressure this team is under, right? Mm. Number one seed from the LPL coming in, expected to be a favorite to win this tournament and has performed incredibly poorly compared to what we know this team is capable and of. And now you would be the only LPL team not to make it out. Yeah, and we have seen, I think, out of the other LPL teams, Weibo in particular, I actually rated pretty highly coming in, but LNG mm -hmm. having the glow up that they did, I think is also a large part of why BLG was so thrown off. Mm. And I do think that particularly if you're a first seed, the teams that they lost to, I don't think there's any shame in losing. But if mm -hmm. it happens when you feel like you're the favorite, it, the fact that they're swapping away from their jungle is, I think, telling in that regard as well. Oh yeah, I know uh, Shun is starting again in this series, and I, I know they've not been playing up to par in BLG, but I have such a hard time. I'm so incredibly yeah. stressed about putting that hope into G2, just because they need to hit a standard now that they yeah. haven't hit yet in two years, and I'm... I don't know. I know. You, you have some trepidations. Yeah. And listen, I actually think this G2 team is exceptional. And I have a few stats that might change your mind. Okay, go, so go. We've heard people say <laughs> that this 2019 G2 was this legendary team and that it's you know unfair to compare this team to them. I think they're way closer than you think. So in 2019, G2 against all LCK and LPL teams was 12 and 11, just above 50%, but they won MSI and went to world final. Because when you're playing against the best of the best, you're not gonna win every game. Eight of those wins were against T1. They were eight and three against T1 and four and eight against everyone else. Mal, was T1 better in 2019 or now? No. Okay. I, I don't think okay. it's close. Let's hold on to this. This year's G2, <laughs> 2024, six and nine against the LCK LPL combined. Eight of those losses are to T1. Okay. Who we okay. just decided is better now. Okay. They are four and one against everybody else. You got me. They are four and zero against the LPL. You got me, Angelina. BLGs from whoa, the LPL. Whoa. There is an absolute way that okay. they can do this. They actually Thank need you, to Jared. believe G2 they are just Jersey. as good, if not better, as the 2019 version of G2. Heads. <laughs> what we're not gonna do, what we're not gonna do is give up before a game is played. Right, Roma? <laughs> you worry about statistic, about narratives. Fear not, friends, as we will show them no mercy. Do not be scared. As we never said easy, we said beautiful. And those are exactly the moments we train for. This is why we do this job. 
high stake games, good opponent, it makes us feel alive. Do you think this team was built to defeat some NA players? We are exactly where we're meant to be. We are Europe's last standing fighters, hope bringers. And today is our revenge on BLG. Today we start our legacy or we gloriously die doing what we love. What a privilege to be the one taking down China for seed, to battle. And I don't know how to follow that. I love the passion. The battle! I love the hype! <laughs> Valhalla shining in Chrome, baby. It's gonna be some Mad Max stuff in the draft. I mean, pressure's on for both of these organizations. First seeds for the LPL and the LEC. As Flowers said last year, the last vestige of hope for Europe. Whereas for BLG, it's about pride. It's about representing, joining their LPL brothers in the quarterfinals. The other three have found their way into the top eight. Made it through. And remember that BLG was supposed to be the bastion of hope, the bastion of consistency, where all three other teams were the ones who were a little bit all over the place. Here comes everyone. It was Genji or BLG, right? That, it was that Genji, was... BLG, maybe an HLE. Yeah. There was nobody else. Right. And now there might not even be a BLG. And for all of LEC, this entire year has been about, oh, G2 looking for the next goal, the bigger goal, the international goal, training up and still winning domestically. To fall flat, to fall short on that international goal would be a devastating, not just to them, but now as the sole hope, the sole remaining contender for the region, for the entire region and the truth is this world switch stage has shown strengths and weaknesses for both sides for blg their early games at the start of the tournament were promising but then against BS psg they got dominated in game one they almost lost that game and for g2 that clutch factor didn't come through against t1 a game that they could have won those baron steals the epic team fights the great plays from t1 but here we are, we jump into draft. Let's see what the priorities are. Ari taken away from Knight, makes a lot of sense. The Ash taken away as well. Aurora and Yone, the typical red side bands that we often see here at Worlds. Now G2, what else are they thinking about on the blue sides? Do they want to continue? Orion and Nocturne has been the name of the game. This is a combo that's been talked about by every single team, but G2 consistently prioritizing it. Nico. Okay. I mean, of course, Nico flexible between both mid and bot. It does look like G2 setting themselves up for the Orianna once more. We'll see what the priority pick will be as BLG round out their ban phase. Nocturne, Vi, Kalista. Ah, that's going to be the final ban taken away from G2. They've shown a priority for this champion. And of course, I think in the context of the Meta Kalista in general, secures lane prio. If you don't have enough sustained damage, you see those Randuin's builds where she just becomes unkillable. Orianna will be the option. BLG can take away a Nocturne if they want to. But the downside of this prioritization is a champion like Vi, who has been incredibly impactful, the Skarner, a lot of the more Jax, conventional... you left the Jax open for Bin. And One I'll of his honest, huge comfort picks. And it gets T1. It, the, the Bin Jax wasn't there. It wasn't enough. But in the previous series, it was Bin Jax all the way. And it feels like when he's rising up, he's been performing. That level is something that you just... I mean, can you really contend with it? We I saw mean, last year in the Elimination Series, Ben got the better of BB in just about every single game, and now you've given him his comfort. Well, G2 will likely answer it with something like a Gnar or the Poppy. So far, Broken Blade has played five different champions across the Swiss stage. I wonder if we'll bring out something new today, but instead, as you rightly said, Nocturne is the expected jungle pick here. They could also go for something like the Vi, but it looks like they're going to stick with the approach that they brought against T1. In game two is where we saw them finding great fights, big advantages, opportunities to turn the game in their favor. But in game one, this strategy didn't really work out for them. The Gragas, of course, was a big part of, of that. Of course. They're not as scared now that the Gragas is there, of course. And that after that first game, it was the Skarner they banned away. So it's not like they haven't given up power picks, but maybe they feel the angle is a little better this time. Snar now locked in. Knight debating what he wants to go for. And Betty, we've talked about this before. Silas. You know, Knight has so many iconic picks, but obviously Silas is a champion that, especially against the Gnar, the Nocturne, the Orianna, has so much playmaking potential. It certainly does. I think the Silas has a lot of great ultimates to steal here, but he's hovering. And it's gonna be the LeBlanc. 
We look at his career all time. LeBlanc is definitely one of his most played with 36 games, only hovering around a 55% win rate, which when you think about Knight with how many incredible win rates he has with things like Syndra and Ari is a little surprising to see. We'll see how this one pans out because typically Skarn and LeBlanc is not a duo that you often associate, but against no. a, an Orianna, it can be a very effective matchup. But hell, we even saw it from Showmaker earlier in the day in our first series of the matchup. So uh, it can definitely be strong, especially in side lanes where we saw how Cap struggle to get farm in the side lanes because Juju wasn't probably setting him up to get that farm. And if Knight is left isolated, look at this 1-3-1 that PLG are already setting up for themselves. And it's one of the downsides that's been called out about the way the G2 are drafting, right? Yes, Orianna is powerful, but it doesn't give the same side lane agency as a champion like the Ari or LeBlanc will. Maybe limiting one of the strongest points in the map for them, but have to hope the Orianna will be enough. And you said it, the LeBlanc, we saw the Nocturne comp really struggle against T1, partially because of the Gragas, partially because there really just wasn't a good target for the Nocturne to jump on. LeBlanc certainly not bad, but it's so slippery that the follow-up isn't there. It's just not going to work out. Poppy ban. Good ban. Taken away from Mickey. Thank good respect ban. Obviously blocks the first half of Distortion as well as the Jack Sleep. I wonder if G2 is thinking about a Kai'Sa right now. BOG could consider an Ezreal. I quite like their ability to play with poke, right? LeBlanc later on into the game becomes this great poke champion. And G2 is going to pan that one away. So Zaya and Ezreal taken off the boards. Interesting. Now, BLG really get their pick of the litter here. Do they want to go for something more team fight focused? MF would certainly be vulnerable against this G2 composition and combo. Kaisa would be more safe, and that will yes. be the option. And it's an awkward position because you don't want to give the Ezreal up, but Kaisa was traditionally a pretty good answer into that same Ezreal. Now the question is, what are they going to prioritize? Draven, we saw, couldn't really get through the front line of T1. Maybe they feel a little bit better in the context of this draft, but AD carry pool has been limited very heavily. The Draven itself already taken away. You know, like, a part of me feels like they're going to do something like Twitch or Cogmore. Um, we wanted to okay, see MF. Okay, they're going for the MF. That's fine. I think it's very, like, team fight driven. Um, which is very much what that comp is leading towards. Does look like it's going to be a rel. They might go for Leona if they want a little bit more guaranteed lockdown with the, the Q that Leona brings with the instant stun. Sure. And of course, it's not really the best uh, Merc Treads team to play up against. So many of the CC tools just Russell's don't interact with tenacity. But rel still remains this incredibly powerful playmaker. Leona has a little bit less hard committal in terms of the CC because she can ulti and is often a little bit tankier early on. But BLG. May look for the Alistair here. Really lackluster first couple of levels, but as you go later in the game, can be such a nuisance to deal with. Yeah, it does imply that BLG is considering a lane swap. Uh, the bot lane two versus two here could be very difficult for them to execute. But BLG have great side lane threats. I think that they've got very solid poke as well, especially when Kaisa starts building out that AP. She's going to be this long range threat that can just chip away your HP bars. G2 have strong, hard committal engage thanks to the Nocturne ultimate and the Rel. The Wombo combo kind of speaks for itself. You can see the highlight reel in your head, but it's a question of will they be able to enact it when there's so much mobility on the side of BLG. You've got Jax's jump. You've got the, uh, uh, I mean, you've got the interruption and interference from the Alistair, Kaisa's ultimate, LeBlanc W. There's a lot of mobility on the side of BLG to give them agency to navigate their way around these team fights. There is, and it puts you in a position where BLG get ahead if they are able to establish that side lane pressure you talked about. If G2 has to enter these objectives blind, their comp becomes not impossible, but certainly very, very difficult to execute. I think the biggest thing about this is, it is of course. Best of three, first game. This is going to be very telling because BLG on Bin, if G2 can beat Bin's jacks, then that's huge in terms of confidence and momentum. Yeah. However, you could just have reality come crashing down on you as it's Bin's jacks. I mean, I'm not going to lie, Vidius. I'm doing everything I can in my power not to have a panic attack right now. <laughs> As two EU pundits casting this, we're always going to do our best. We're going to represent both sides. This is two incredible stories from two incredible leagues. But on a personal, emotional level, I am a very scared, scared boy when it comes to LEC representation at this tournament. That said, BLG, certainly a worthy contender, a team that has been rising up despite a somewhat questionable start. A lot of that we heard in an interview with Wei talking about, hey, they didn't quite have the right read on the meta. And it's certainly developed, we've seen over the last few series. Bin's Jax Pryo remains there, but his individual performance has stepped up. Knight and Elf both with tools between the LeBlanc and the Kaisa to really take over these fights. And again, you just read the nameplates. Knight, Elk, Kaisa, LeBlanc. You can't afford anything less than your best if you're and playing for G2 right now. And in that PSG series, I really feel like Elk and Bin really stepped up. 
in the deficits they found themselves in when the things were getting a little bit shaky. It was thanks to Bin's fantastic flanks. It was thanks to Elk's incredible team fighting that they were able to turn that series around. And of course, in game two, they were able to dominate their opposition. So I think you have to keep track of uh, of their impact in the team fights, and we'll see if we get to see a lot more from Knight in this game on the LeBlanc, because a lot of poke threats, a lot of individual agency. Uh, when you kind of look at the low mobility side of an Orianna and an MF, there's great opportunities here, is we are initiating the lane swap. This is something we talked about in the draft. The ward will be swatted out, cleansed out, and Broken Blade now making his way towards the mid lane. Spot him here, not gonna go over the wall with the Blast Cone, don't wanna risk anything. Of course, no surprise to anyone watching from home that G2 versus BLG is our featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz. Look, first seeds, both teams, no one expected them in the 2-2 slot, but they were also here last year, so maybe we were the fools all along. Maybe this is the inevitable rematch. And could it really end any other way for one of these squads? It's a lot of tension. Single best of three deciding whether or not you'll be continuing into a tournament or flying home. Yeah, I mean, the fact that BLG spent the entire summer finding success with Wei, and then they brought out Shun here halfway through the Swiss stage. Just goes to show the, uh, the difficulties and challenges that BLG have been facing here at the Swiss stage of the World Championship. When so much of the conversation was how Wei kind of changed the roster, made them more complete, gave them way more options, um, to then bring in Shun was definitely a huge surprise. And in contrast, G2 set these high expectations around their mid-game approach, and against T1, we saw them getting dominated in the mid-game with those superstar plays that we saw from T1. Definitely was the case. Now we keep our eyes on this dive. Ben getting locked up. Level two is there. Counter Strike available to stop any more damage. Get that Jax low. Ben for now. Feeling relatively comfortable on coming in with the level two. Waiting in the brush, knowing he's invisible. Headbutt pulverize. Ignite now ticking. Ben coming over the wall. They get the spell shield out and they slow that initial jungle path. It's a small advantage, but Shun happy to be that much quicker on the clear. I mean, Bin wasn't punished in the dive. He's able to soak up a lot of the experience. Jun also able to steal away the full uh, top side of G2 jungle camps. Jun can now hover around mid. Look at the wave state. Not ideal for caps. Blanc. Suppression into the wall. Chain now follow up. Caps is just a dead man. Clean first blood coming in from BLG. Beautifully played around the mid lane. A very effective gank from Shun. Caps holds on to his flash, thinking he can find the outplay, but the chain CC from both the LeBlanc and the Skana was enough to secure first blood. It doesn't go on to the LeBlanc, which would have been ideal for BLG, but still, they'll take it. Get the early TP out from Caps. We'll see. Shun wants to use this lead to go for something like the Heart Steel. Perhaps a more conservative choice, but already getting mid lane off to a good start. So impactful. Yes, Orianna is that big alt one button champion, but we mentioned side lane already and Knight having an individual lead just makes it pretty impossible for Caps to play the 1v1, but with Knight not having recalled yet, Caps trying to take an opportunity to bully while they're on relatively even items. Exactly, like Knight just taking these trades though. Remember, he can TP. It's just extra credit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he comes back, oh, you're at 50% HP, I'm full. I've got my pots, exactly. I've got my items. So even trades are losing trades for Caps. Yeah, but that's you can why see... Yike has to come mid, exactly. Yeah. All he cares about is getting this wave in. Maybe he can get that free reset. Knight's still playing very aggressively. Caps will miss the cannon there as well. So just insult to injury in favor of Knight. Reset's gonna have to come through for Caps. Knight does have that experience advantage. You can see the half a level. Knight looking, is he sticking around for another? I mean, I guess he can afford to stick around for another wave, knowing that he does have that TP available. This wave is going to push very slowly, because LeBlanc only level 5, of course. Yep. Um, but the crucial but thing is... Level 5 Doran's ring. Yeah. You know, not, it, not a lot there yet. So Caps, he's going to lose out on a couple creeps. Good play there from Knight, really maximizing the advantage he's going to get off the back of that play. Uh, I wonder if he even needs to expend the TP here. But regardless, he will have it available to him. Caps going to lose out on 4 CS there. So that's a full level disadvantage he now finds himself in. Now Shun, hovering around the bot side of the map. Mickey, quick Q, taking his time on, just waiting in the brush there. And the swaps have come back through as well, so Elk now back on the bot side Spot of the map. one Hansama. Nice knockup onto the initial engage coming from Mickey. Five stacks of the plasma, instantaneous shattering strike on a two from Mickey, but he's gonna go down as well. Flash in from Elk to finish. BLG, two kills on the board, only five minutes into this and game. look at the wave state as well. Hansama in dire straits as Elk and On can allow this wave to push in. Hansama can't afford to farm. And Mickey gets punished in the play. Great stuff from Shun already in this early game, taking quick leads for BLG. Shun, the On performance as well. Two key components of any team strategy, jungle and support, but both of them able to find those early plays, get those small advantages. Now snowballing further ahead is Broken Blade. Be in a solid position. Bin 
false sense of security here. Doesn't have vision in the brush. But it's only a level five Gnar and a level four Nocturne. Pings into the brush, anticipating that Yike is there. So Broken Blade gonna get a bit of a positive trade because Bin knows he can't step too far forward, but nothing else gonna come from Yike spending that time. Does, however, give priority access to the Grubs. Don't have a wave in their favor topside, but they do know that Bin is chunked out. So starting off the objective here. Notice as well, Elk making his way down alongside Shun and on. The first Grub will go down. So perhaps some wasted time here for Elk, especially if two Grubs secured. I think G2 can be happy with that. Knight gonna make his way over. Level six, level six secured as well for Caps. G2 trying to back up, make sure that BLG can't get any exit kills. Unfortunately, oh. that they can't grab the crab, but good recognition from Yike and G2 to realize, hey, BLG are on the move. We cannot stick around for the third grub. Very likely would have meant death. Shun, Knight, Elk, everyone really in the area. Bot wave is a bit awkward for Bin. He's not going to get there in time, but it, I mean, it's still a stacked wave frozen just underneath his tower. Knight can now set up a nice freeze around mid as well. This bot wave, or well, sorry, this top wave rather, will push towards Han Summer and Mickey, so they should be able to catch that one out. But you just look at the bottom of your screen and you can see advantages across the crucial carries for BLG. Knight has about a half a level advantage still in the bottom lane. Kaiser, thanks to that early first, well, not first blood, but early kill, gives yep. him about a 450 gold lead. Interestingly, they actually swapped Han Summer over to mid, and they're going to have Caps catch that top wave to try and get him back into the game a little bit more. A huge stacked wave. Importantly, it stopped Knight from recalling. They were able to interrupt the recall and then forcing the wave in. Does mean that he's a little bit behind in terms of presence on the map. Shouldn't matter too much as Bin is already pushing that bot wave in, so really tough for G2 to potentially contest the Drake at this point. Both teams probably a bit more focused about the three-minute uh, second grub spawn that is just around the corner. Yeah, I mean, it looks like that uh, both teams heavily prioritizing those grubs, as you mentioned, and the respawns are going to be super important. But because they're a ways away, right now it just seems like the goal of each team is to just catch these waves, continue to farm up, get those crucial core items. Yike now ticking over to level six. Obviously, the, the moment where Nocturne really feels like he comes online. G2 shouldn't really have an angle to contest here, likely to just concede this Drake. DLG, as we get later into the game, again, Bin is going to be such a difficult, difficult uh, problem to manage, essentially, as the Jax has more items under his belt. Sometimes when you have that late game scaling hyper carry, deal with this champion. But Han Sama on the MF, pretty hard to <laughs> just uh, 1v1 a Jax in any given fight. Broken Blade's doing pretty well. He was able to get that additional support from Yike on the top side to deny Bin a bit of farm. I like what On has been doing in the laning phase though, like his early plays on the bot side, two versus two, working with Shun to deny Han Summer a lot of farm. Now again in the top side, every time Mickey goes missing, he puts that pressure down. And uh, he's been doing a good job of just helping Elk extend his lead even further. Now Shun looks for a gank bot lane. Broken Blade Trouble Ben already popping the ulti. Megan Narwares is gonna go. Nice wall up, leap forward, knocks him back in. Crucially, Shun missing the ultimate. Broken Blade likely still going to fall here. Ben tanky, but doesn't want to risk taking another shot. Could survive. Now the counterplay coming in on the top side. G2 know they can get aggressive. Spotted on leaving the lane, so try to get something done onto Elk. Will at Nocturne. least get the cleanse. Caps is making his way up towards top as well. Elk knows that he's within dive range. Ben will be able to get a plate, maybe a second one. Bit of extra gold funneled into him. As Knight goes back to base with no TP, Elk is going to be denied a lot of farm. So a good trade from Hans and Mickey gives that advantage, meaning that Elk will be denied some CS. And knowing that Yike is around the top side of the map, given the bot side play that Shun tried to make, Elk has to be respectful. On though, with the level six, should be able to provide that peel. Mickey very close to level six. He'd love to get this before his base, but he's not going to. And really crucially needs it for the next Grub spawn. Difference in level six has decided so many fights at this tournament. This Knight once again in a position to try and cancel Caps, but doesn't feel like he needs to take the risk. Knows that Caps is going to be forced to TP back if he wants to contest. Yeah, it already feels like the atmosphere in the studio is very tense. There are obviously a lot of G2 fans here, <laughs> but uh, we know that with the early advantage BLG have gotten, it hasn't snowballed out of control just yet. We talked a lot about how they have these two great side lane threats. Knight already on the row. Mickey can be spotted level five. Level, though, five. To level nine of the LeBlanc is going to lose a lot of health just for walking into river there. At least knows that BLG have committed lots of members in the area. Maybe they're thinking that Broke Still Blade on the level push. six, as you mentioned, Dracos. He needs to get some experience. That mid wave is going to disappear, though. And there are no completed items on either side, so it really just is about level discrepancies. Ultimate cooldowns. Yike can get into the pit. BLG need all three if they want the four grub buff. 
G2 trying to poke, but this is such a difficult fight for them to play out. They've got Elk on the flank and they're not doing anything about it. Mickey now going in, but it's not going to connect onto anybody. The Q initially going to hit Knight, but Mickey just getting one pop. Now finally the fog coming in. Knight might be in trouble. They're forcing the flash out at least initially. Ulti going over the pit, but it's a scattered fight from G2. Caps doesn't have any mana, but now Broken Blade is here. Instantly punted right back though. Not interested in taking that one. Shockwave to help secure. Grubs down at the very least. Three to three there, but a messy fight. Ultimately, it ends up being a one-for-one. One. Caps is going to TP bot to catch that wave as Bin was able to secure himself another plate. But you called it, Dracos. Messy, uncoordinated. Mickey not being level six there was so crucial because you see him engage. And if the Rel ultimate was available, then yeah, they could have done some serious damage. That could have been the initiation. But again, keep eyes on Mickey. He's going to be the initiator here. The MF hasn't quite gotten into position yet. It's four versus three. He loses a lot of HP. No Rel ult not available. There's nothing for Knight really to be afraid of, and he gets an easy kill onto Mickey. But knowing that that mobility is gone, they try to get the chain CC, he flashes away. The ultimates are kind of mismatched as Shun is inside the pit, he's forced to disengage. But Elklo expending that flash to avoid the shockwave means that he ends up losing his life, resulting in a one for one and an even trade of grubs. G2 happy not to concede the fourth grub. About a 1,000 gold difference between these two teams, a little bit more now in the favor of BLG as Knight and Elk really taking over there. In terms of total gold. Knight already becoming that threat on the sideline. His companion completed. This is where it gets hard, right? You saw how much damage he did to Mickey. Broken Blade stepping up. Crucially, the chains don't connect. And it's tricky for G2 to navigate, right? They have the wombo combo. They've got the flashes off the major carries. So for the next three to four minutes, they have a good angle if they can find a fight. But bin has been doing a great job on a side lane, right? Like. He has just been permanently playing for plates. He hasn't been overdrawn into fights. Broken Blade spent a lot of time. On. Aftershock proc. Shun coming over the wall. Hansama crucially pinned. Ulti fall up there, leaving him for dead. They know there's nothing left. BLG. Just make it look so effortless. It's an easy pick once again for BLG. They're fighting over a control ward. It's, and it's again, it's like a three versus four because Knight had Pryo in the river. He was able to move first. And even though he wasn't really involved in the play, the fact that that numbers advantage forced that G2 to retreat, allowing BLG to find an easy pick. They're TPing bot, they set their sights on Caps. Caps, movement speed steroid there. Knight ready to come over the wall. Shun going through it. Chain now connecting. Nice shockwave back, but Elk is there to follow up. Good flash out from Caps. But BLG have moved from top to mid to bot, moving with pressure constantly across the map. Broken Blade is looking for an opportunity in the mid lane, but BLG are just kind of running rings around G2 in this early game. It's just so hard for G2 to find a fight on their terms. Mickey is that source of engage. Want to get aggressive here. Counter-Strike is there. Mickey now pulling the back. It's a clean combo to kick things off. Knight snapping back, but he's still in the MF ulti. Yike. Finding the kill, crucially, for G2. A nice combo there from Mickey, expecting the W to come through from Knight. He waits before committing the stun, and then fully engages, knowing that the MF ult is right behind him. Shun now sets his sights on mid. The, the pace Shun is playing at in this game, I, his CS is good, but I feel like I have not seen him hit a jungle camp in five minutes. He's been everywhere on the map. Yeah, rarely do we see Skarn as this active in the early game, but Shun is constantly looking for these ganks, looking for these plays, and he'll secure his team a Rift Herald as the Dragon goes in favor of G2. About a 1.3k gold lead in favor of BLG, and crucially, it is coming from the mid laner and the AD carry of BLG. G2 trying to get some pressure back on the bottom side of the map. You can see the lane economy snapshot. Pretty damning indication of the early game thus far for G2. Not the most massive individual leads, but we'll keep an eye on those item completions. G2 will knock down bot lane tier one. Expect that mid will be the center of attention for BLG, given the access to the map it gives them with that Herald. But we'll see where they decide to use it. I was going to say, the Broken Blade has TP. Maybe if they wanted to defend top, that they could. But instead, they're going to concede it. They're going to allow Broken Blade to push in another wave on the bot sides. He is almost a full level up over Bin. But uh, of course, Ben being able to catch this wave will close that a little bit. But again, Broken Blade doing a good job off on the side lane as we kind of reset back out onto the map. First items being completed across the board. Trinity Force getting closer and closer for Ben. Dragon four minutes away, these neutral objectives quite a ways away, which means that these teams likely setting their sights on the on the cross maps, on the side lanes. You can see BLG already pinging that bot side of the map. They've collectively brought both Knight and Elk into the mid lane, get that mid push. This will allow them to move into the bot side jungle, take full vision control, and set up for this objective. Mickey in response is now making his way down to try and contest, but I think BLG is too late. 
Knock up, quick Alistair combo. Broken Blade gonna try to double hop out of safety, but Shun already waiting, and Knight grabs the kill. BLG, this was the team people expected to see at the start of the Swiss stage, but here they are, they've finally arrived. They're playing the map beautifully, and it's so efficient in terms of what they do when they come back out onto the map. They don't bother wasting time sending anyone to the top side. They bring two into mid, grab that mid prio, and then immediately from mid move into the bot jungle and then commit onto Broken Blade, who's overstayed. He pushed that extra wave in bot, he stuck around hitting that bot tower for a little longer than he should, and BLG in that small window were able to find themselves another kill and a tower, and G2 can't cross the map anywhere because they tried to defend the play rather than get something elsewhere on the map. Another advantage gained for BLG. And it's tricky as we get deeper into this game because Garner's getting tanky fast. Early Warden's Mail, such a fantastic pur purchase against a triple AD comp effectively as once again now Mickey has been locked up, likely to fall. Crash down buys him a bit of space, caps in the area. Will just cost him the flash in exchange for Shun's ultimate, but a positive trade for BLG. But it's similar to what we saw in the series versus T1. G2 members just keep getting caught. Prior to objectives, randomly in side lanes. Again, it's BLG that have good setup on the map. They've pushed out top. BB is catching the bot wave. And so while G2 are scattered, what do BLG do? Put pressure into the mid lane, the weakest point of G2 where they then can't be punished. He's gonna be able to get away on the Rift Herald as well. Escort that one to safety. He's just using it as an escape tool. BLG extend the gold lead now to about 3k. Just so much pressure on G2 now in this game one. You can feel like it's already starting to slip away. It's not It's not the biggest gold lead. BLG have just been cleaner in most of their plays. G2 are getting back what they can, trading even where they can, but we know how terrifying Ben will be. He feels like a ticking clock stacked against G2. Now though, the setup for G2, pushing the bot wave. Ben, I don't think powerful enough in the 1v1 yet, especially with Broken Blade having red buff but does at least feel like he can step up and push this wave. Instead, just keeping it here. Knowing that it's Broken Blade who has to risk something to walk yep, forward. Exactly, and so you can see how it's kind of awkward for G2 now. Caps has set up a bit of a freeze on the top side of the map, knowing that there's no objectives to play for, so it's Knight who in theory is being starved of experience and gold. But the same thing's happening on the bot side of the map. This wave is ever so slowly pushing towards Broken Blade because Bin is getting those last hits, but Broken Blade has to overextend, and both supports now have to come because On is threatening a gank, whereas Mickey has to provide peel. On just continues to walk up, completely unafraid, knowing his team is closer. Advantage of having Elk on the Kaisa. But look, look at mid lane right now. You'll see Knights wandering around the map because there's not much that he can do. But there's a big difference between a LeBlanc wandering around and an Orianna yes, because there of is. your ability to set up a potential play. And also, once you knock down that tier one, look how much of the enemy jungle just belongs to Knight anytime Midwave is in a decent state. He can walk in so freely, so effortlessly to just threaten. Nocturne out now going in. TP coming into the midst of G2 as well. They're finally going to spot it. Looks like they're going to try to catch out Knight, looking to punish, but on an excellent use of disruption. Should now trying to get involved in the fight. Bid waiting over the wall. Jack, keep your eyes on that counter strike right into two. Quick flash out from Cap. Shockwave. Holding on for now. Ulti coming in from Anzama, but it's just not connecting the way that they need it to. Shockwave from Cap's doing a bit of damage. Mickey taken down. G2, do they want to keep taking this fight? Shun on the run. Health bar's low. Knight forced back. A messy exchange overall, but Mickey the only one to fall. A situation that should have ended in disaster for BLG ends up becoming a winning play. They find a kill onto Mickey. They're able to get out without really expending anything. Look, Flash available still for Elk, Knight, Shun, and Bin. G2 realize that they can't contest this dragon. They've just committed all their ultimates. Yike and Caps had to flash out of that play. And keep your eyes, because the idea is to punish the TP that gets invested. They interrupt on here, but they know if they hard commit, the Alistair, of course, has ultimate. But in this situation, BLG's disconnected. They're, they're isolated away from Knight, so they try to lock him down. A good ultimate from Mickey, but Knight's able to get away. And then look at Shun and Bin on the flank. They actually zone away this backside, splitting the fountain to a really nice shockwave on the front. But Shun and Bin are able to sidestep the ultimate entirely, and they don't get punished for it at all. And again, I think if Shun and Bin aren't there, Hansama is able to get a better angle on that ulti. That shockwave hitting three people, even when it's only Orion on a single item, might have been more kills for G2. But BLG salvaging what could have been a disastrous situation well. G2. And you, you can see the power of the Nocturne, the disruption it can provide, but so far just have not been able to pin Knight down and finish that kill off in, in the most of the skirmishes they've started. The thing is, it's really easy to forget that BLG is one of the best team fighting teams in the world. The reason that they were able to dominate, the reason why domestically they were able to win so many series from deficits was because they team fought their way back into games with their standout individual players. 
And G2 have brought a team fight composition, which has conceded them a lot in the early game, thanks to Jun's fantastic presence in early game ganks. But that's then been further converted into these late game fights where G2 are not being given any proper setup. All of these fights are so uncoordinated from G2. The fact that Mickey didn't have the level six around this dragon, the fight happened before the dragon had even spawned. And G2 are basically relying, waiting on BLG to make that slip up where they can find a good fight. And BLG's just not giving it to them. They're just continuously extending the lead bit by bit. Now it's sitting in an almost 4k gold lead. And again, credit to BLG. This is a much higher level than they have shown in most of their series previously, right? The PSG series was messy. This is looking much more confident, much more controlled. And it's a reminder that Worlds is a marathon. It is a month-long tournament. And as long as you stay in it, as long as you keep going, you always have a chance to turn around and to show up better. Finally being able to showcase some of what made them so dominant in LPL and for G2. Still trying to find that same footing, trying to find that same form. They saw some success at MSI, but they're running out of time quickly. They can't afford any more miscoordinated team fights or loose engages, because you talked about it. You have the team fight power. You gave up a couple thousand gold to get the team fight power, but now you have to execute better. And that's a tall task for anyone. Well, the Baron is alive. Dragon is still two and a half minutes away. You'll notice Broken Blade can't afford to overextend. Mickey caught out. Battering Strike there is going to try to re-engage onto Elk immediate follow-up. Clean combo going in! Elk still standing though! He's still alive! The Ignite on another Broken Blade going mini and trying to follow! It's a messy fight, Hotsom already taken down. Bin is here to turn it back on. Quickly going over the wall. The Blast Code does not matter. BLG perfection to shut down the combo of G2. They're able to outplay the fight once more. They thought that they had caught out Elk, but he was able to survive for so long. Broken Blade had to commit the flash to even secure the kill, and it ends up being a one for three with a Baron to boot. BLG dominating in the first game of this series. Caps can't even knock down the tier one in return. This is devastating. You saw it. They got the combo together. They tried to turn around. They're gonna wait for Elk to respawn so that all five members secured the Baron. BLG with once again a dominant team fight. And you'll notice the patient play that comes out from PLG. They don't panic. They realize that the collapse is coming through. And G2, it's another one of those situations where they're not setting up for the objective. They just see an opportunity. Mickey looks like he's getting caught out here. They get the cleanse out from the Kaiser so they think we can engage on this. The shockwave comes through, the damage is good. But then the ulti from Kaiser, that self-sufficiency buys a little bit more time as Yike and the Rel falls. Now Hans Hammer is isolated, he has no peel. Caps can't contribute anything else. And because that initial engage was tanked by BLG, they were able to win the fight. But G2 want to up the pace, want to keep things going. Beautiful up from Hansama to get things started. This time Elf didn't have the tools that he needed to survive. On taken down as well. G2 trying to delete these Baron buffs as quickly as they can. Knight TPing in off the side. Caps Hansama running. Mickey going to fall here. Sacrificed a decent play to stall the map, to slow down the Baron push from BLG. It's a two for two. They end up getting the TP out from BLG as, uh, sorry, from Knight as well, who's moved towards the bot side of the map. This will give a bit of the bounty gold back over to G2 as Broken Blade secures the top tower, but BLG have set their sights on this bottom tier two, and I don't think G2 Trying have the resources to, the to stop it. Counter-Strike there, beautiful CC coming through, Shockwave there, Hansama getting one pop, Cap's got nowhere left to go, the chain's connected, it's just a matter of time, Bin on a rampage. BLG taking down the bot lane tier two to follow. I mean, BLG are just beating G2 with their wallets now. They're so strong, they have the Baron. Broken Blade's able to get the tier two back, but BLG don't have to stop. The wave clear is gone for G2, which means that BLG can set their sights on the bot lane tier three. Knock down the inhibitor likely to follow. BLG will back away instead. Not wanting to concede anything else. Spot the Scryer's Bloom, know that Mickey is behind them. Calls on the barrel in the studio for G2. Down, but certainly not out. 6K, again, against a composition that should be more powerful in these fights. Feels like a tall task. On Alistair is doing so much work in these fights as well. They just, they, they respond to the dive uh, incredibly well. And again, like, it's a nice idea. You shut down Elk, you catch him off in a side lane, the TP comes in through caps, and you're thinking, hey, we get two kills initially, but Broken Blade can't join the fight, which means it immediately becomes a situation where now that Bin and Knight have regrouped in the three versus three, they just lose. They don't have the ability to extend the fight. And you think at that point, hey, actually getting the Baron off, being able to cross map, getting these trays, all positive plays. 
but then Hans and Caps overstay on bot lane. They don't Whoa. respect the ability for Shun and Bin to just dive that as much as they want. They're all to find another two kills, and now the bot lane inhibitor is exposed. And again, G2's composition is a glass cannon. It's unwieldy. You get one shot, you hit all five members, yeah, you're gonna win the fight, but the second those ultis are down, Elk, Knight, Bin can tear through any one of the G2 carries in an isolated 1v1. It's difficult for G2. The wave clear, the MF and Oriana provides will at least slow BLG down a bit. G2 will have some time to fish for picks as Mickey hunting Bin in a side lane. 250 till the respawn on Baron. Sole point for BLG, but four minutes out before that'll be available. Objective bounties up means this gold lead can close relatively quickly if G2 can find a good fight, but it's definitely difficult. I mean, credit to Shun, right? Coming in halfway through Swiss. I mean, his debut in the PSG game, a couple question marks raised, but they yeah, were able to clean yeah. it up a lot more in game two. And now here in game one against G2, he has been so instrumental in the early game success, finding successful gank after gank after gank. 1011 on the Skarner. And again, when we talk about kind of the difference between Shun and Wei, it's usually what we talk about is like confidence on carries. You know, Shun did not expect him to be the guy pulling out the crazy Skarner games. Not right. that it's beyond him, right? But you expected maybe a crazy Nidalee game, a crazy AP carry game. And he's been involved in 12 of the team's 13 kills. He's been a monster. So I, I think him and On both. Fantastic game one. Yeah, and I mean, which... so much criticism levied towards On so far in this tournament, given that uh, he has been getting caught out a lot. But, I mean, they've both been having great games. And now it's just a matter of closing things out. Baron is still about a minute 40 away. Uh, BLG likely can't just siege as freely as they want if they collectively group up as five they're leaving themselves exposed to the thing we've been talking so much about which is the g2 team fight and while g2 are still at this kind of deficit you still have to respect it right as long as the game is going on their ability to land those five ultimates is always going to be very real and so blg can continue to play the side lanes keep the pressure up suffocate the vision out from g2's jungle look for picks look for opportunities and then uh, look to close out the game that way G2, hoping to catch somebody out, but again, the vision really not in their favor. Makes it so difficult for them to find those angles. You mentioned it very early on in the game, Betty, but the poke, LeBlanc at this point in the game, very free to just Ooh. throw a combo down. The same is true from Elk with these long range Ws. I was Shun's ulti there, but it doesn't matter. Elk will still get the mid tier two. Then pressure, this is exactly what you Looking want to see the combo for the again. But who do they go on? It's a timer now, Yike has to go. It's not going to happen, just a major cooldown removed. And that's going to... Okay, no, Bin decided to move away. He actually TP'd over from top lane. I thought he was just going to go for the tower, but I guess he wanted to be ready for the potential fight. G2 buy themselves a little bit more time, but now the threat of a Baron, our observers are showcasing the amount of vision that G2 have, and it is nothing. That yeah. Baron is prime I mean, for the take. Knight was waiting over the wall outside of G2's own base, and they couldn't see him until the wave went around the corner. Rugglebait forced into Mega by the poke from Knight. There is something ironic about how dark it is for the side of G2 when it is they who are playing the yeah. Nocturne. Yeah. And notice how PLG are not overforcing the Baron. They could. There's a world where they could start it, and if they're confident enough in the gold advantage that they have, they could use the Baron to force G2 to overextend and turn and fight. But they're not. They're knowing that they're really strong at playing through sides. G2 can't match them in the 1v1s, and so they're just spreading G2 apart, looking for picks. They're chipping away at this tower. Elk got the tier 2 in mid. Bean is able to get the top, uh, the top tier 2. Knight finishes it off. And G2 are just kind of getting desperate. They're, they're having to share a lot of experience and gold, and uh, the gold lead just continues to grow in favor of BLG. At this point, they're just hoping that BLG misstep because they don't get the freedom to just stand back and poke and harass. They have to commit. Their ability to fight comes from those ultimates, comes from that combo. There's so little left when they don't have that. So Knight and Elk waiting off on the side. Shun as well, the setup piece. And Bin still having a great game and still terrifying. Now bear in mind, the Dragon is spawning in 35. And BLG have the ability to play through both. Because G2, they want a group, right? They want to they team fight, they want to collectively fight you as one. And BLG have the ability to just keep the pressure on sides, which means that Bin can, in theory, solo down the dragon. You could also have Elk solo the dragon, while Knight groups up with his team and chips away your HP bar. 
And so G2 could try and hover around the Baron and threaten it, but they could just allow Bin to do it isolated while fighting them 4v5 and keeping them distracted while he secures that objective. BLG is really under no threat here, and it's G2 who now feel the pressure with the deficit that they find themselves. Look, Cap still doesn't have his death cap. The poke continues to come through. Knight freely walking in just to spot them out. And here's that pressure mounting. Now, Bin is on the, the dragon, and the Baron is being started. He doesn't have TP. But Bin can wait. Wait and till they come the in. It's not a fast Baron. On around the corner, oh. G2. This is a Hail Mary. Knight taking so much health away from Yike. Popping the Sterex. They can now follow up as well. On in the midst of the entire team. Locking up Hansama. Vision getting blurry, but Hansama still gets caught in the suppress. He tries to flash out and he gets caught anyway. He's living for a brief moment with the barrier, keeping him standing. But Elk and Knight can start to hunt now. All those cooldowns down and goes Whoa. out. They're trying to turn it back. The clan's just a little bit sloppy, but he buys himself an extra moment. The ulti now to follow. Quick ulti back response. Broken Blade gonna follow up. It's a messy fight. Cap's still alive for an extra moment, but Knight's on the way in. Mickey trying to do what he can to peel for his mid laner, but Bin is just now arriving, just in time to watch G2 fall. A double kill to finish it for Knight. I mean, BLG play it the way they're supposed to. Elk, that was a very ambitious play, but at the end of the day, it still works out. And be able to do exactly what we were just talking about. Create this two points of pressure, force G2 to have to make a decision, and they end up demonstrating beautifully how to use their poke. G2 is forced to ulti onto Jun and on the frontline engage. They're able to take their time. And look, the TP coming in. BLG don't want to give G2 anything. Luckily, G2 able to get the objective down. Yikes flash will be the cost. You highlighted it. Baron picked up another excellent fight for BLG. And it's, again, when BLG were a little out of sorts, there might have been a glimmer of hope. The team fights could look okay. But when you see this proficiency, this patience, using their poke, not giving G2 any cooldowns for free, so hard for G2 yeah, to Yeah, they just it out. let the Baron do the work. Knight takes off the Sterax from Yike. He's very low. Then look at this front line. They're completely safe. On his tank have so much damage. Knight and Elk don't overcommit. Look, they're full HP. They don't really take any HP at damage. And then this, this is where it was super risky <laughs> for Elk. That was probably a little bit of an overstep. He trusted in the Zonyas. He's forced to flash out. Broken Blade's able to find the play, but it doesn't matter because the fight gets split up. And on the on the far end, Knight and Jun are able to clean up with the arrival of Bin. It's an easy team fight win for BLG. You can see smiles on the face of BLG. Like they're feeling good, as they should. This is a level of discipline. Absolutely necessary when you're playing against a composition like G2's. 2 0 13 for Shun. He's been involved in 15 of the team's 16 kills. An immaculate performance from him. And now with the Baron buff, BLG can begin their siege again, playing through two lanes. They keep Bin in mid lane. But if BLG overgroup, again, all it takes is one misstep where G2 are able to layer all of their ultimates together. The death to count now finished win. could be the difference. But finding one fight isn't enough at this point. You'd have to find multiple back to back. And I just don't think that G2 have the damage. I don't think they have the lockdown to really win a team fight. I mean, who's killing Shun? Because they've demonstrated they can kill Elk, but like you have to commit so much just to kill him that yeah. Knight and Bin then clean up the Again, fight. Again, I'm pretty it's... sure if we look back at the team fight, that was almost every single ability just for Elk. Yep. Who is the squishiest member of the team. Yeah, I mean, it's true. Look, he has four deaths. The rest of the team has two. <laughs> it's just it's just that hard. It's tough. Broken Blade at least able to get a little bit of poke down on the night. They're slowing down the push here. Ulti coming out for Yike. Where are they gonna go? Click combo coming in on the L, but he manages to go invisible for a brief moment. Yike now trying to follow up. Mickey coming in over the wall, but he just gets one shot. The carries do too much damage. Broken Blade is here. Elk goes golden. The timing is good. Knock back into the wall with the wall. He'll take one, but BLG are just gonna take the base. Again, G2 succeed in killing Elk, but that is just not enough. On and Bin dive onto the back line. They decimate G2. And in this first game, BLG have dominated from start to finish. BLG reminding us why they are the first seed from the LPL. A nearly effortless game one. Beautiful fights from start to finish. Discipline on the rift, a terrifying prospect. G2, they're gonna have to show us some adaptation here. They've been relying on this Nocturne Oriana combo, but BLG game one were very prepared. Certainly were, we'll see if they wanted to step away from that combo, what side they will select and more when we return from break. But for now, we'll see you in a few.
Red Bull gives you wings. And if you're wondering why I move the way I do, I just feel so good. good. 